This is Roger with Wheel Kinetics in Tucson, Arizona. We're selling this Sequoia. It is a 2007 Toyota Sequoia. It's an SR5 Sport Utility with leather. Um, it does have a third seat. It has 161,000 miles. It's being sold on a salvage title due to theft, not collision. This car is amazing. Um, Basically, they sell them on a salvage title because the insurance companies don't want any liability after they sell them. If you watch the little three-minute animated video we have in our salvage theft ads, you'll understand. Uh, you know, the lawyers for Geico, Progressive, all the big insurance companies, they sell them to us. We sell them to you. You kill yourself by running a stop sign. Some lawyer finds out that they sold it on a clear title, and that implies some sort of uh, warranty, liability. So that's why they throw them under the bus because they got lots of money and they don't want us want anyone going after that in the future. Um, it's lawyers. Anyway, this thing is sweet. Uh, the reason I believe that they, they could have still given it a clear title, but the reason they didn't is they didn't have any keys. So we bought it not knowing what the miles were, um, not knowing if it ran, not knowing anything. Well, we got it here. We had uh, ignition put in. We had a couple keys made for it. Um, the miles are 161,000. And uh, it's an amazing car. Uh, we had to put a new windshield in it. All those miles are clearly highway miles. The windshield was like sandblasted. It was so pitted, um, which is highway driving. Uh, it came from the uh, uh, Bay Area, San Francisco Bay Area, Martinez area, which uh, means that they're not even allowed to look at a dirt road. So it's never been off road, I'm sure. Uh, just driven on uh, interstates all day long, clearly. Um, when we get them here, we do an inspection. This is what they look like. And uh, I have my little cheat sheets on the side. Uh, we did take it to get aligned. It has a tire monitor light on. The scanners at Pep Boys and our scanners say the same thing, that there's nothing wrong. But of course, there's a tire monitor light on. Um, as I say in all our videos with tire monitor lights on, we don't fix them. We tried, we sent it to get aligned. Um, when we were doing the alignment, we uh, asked them to fix that. They said they can't. They have no idea why it's not, why the light's on. And uh, who knows? These things are so annoying. Uh, tire monitor light and parking sensors are the biggest and most annoying things ever made on cars, in my opinion. Um, let's see. It also got the ignition and key. It's a two-key car now, by the way. Uh, we had to get the key program. Um, two keys, actually, we made for it. Uh, program for the ignition to start the car and then the other key that was with it is now a door key okay um, it got new front brake pads and front rotors and new wiper blades and that is it the tires that are on it were on it when we bought it which would indicate I mean these things are clearly almost brand new probably 99.9% .9 so someone liked it enough right before it got stolen to put brand new tires on it which is another indicator that uh, uh, it was very well taken care of, aside from the fact that it runs perfectly, it looks great. Even the original uh, uh, pinstripes are on it, and they're kind of worn down, which means, and the way the paint looks, you probably had it detailed regularly, which kind of wears down the, the pinstriping a little bit. It looks great. I mean, this thing is uh, a really good looking car. If it were white, I would be driving this for my driver. Um, black in Tucson, it gets a little too hot, and I'm a cleanophobe, and so dust bothers me. Not that there's anything wrong with black. Black cars matter, but uh, but uh, I'm a white car guy. All right. Hopefully, uh, nobody takes offense to my preference, but uh, it's a really pretty car. If you like black, it's all there. Interior is fantastic for the miles. Of I don't think that I'm not really sure why whoever owned this thing owned it because it's pretty obvious that there's probably only one person in this car ever, which would mean they probably should have bought a Corolla. seat just a great car anyway I'm gonna fire this thing up I'm gonna look under the hood 
like I said, we've got a handful of keys here. We've got a couple program keys and a couple uh, and one key for the door, I guess. Let's see. There's your remote. That's working. That's locked. That's unlocked. Hundred sixty-one thousand seven hundred forty miles. That tire monitor light, that's not going off and we're not dealing with it. Those are the type of things you can chase forever and never find a reason why and spend a fortune on it. And uh, we're not about to go there. All right. Nothing really to look at here. It's a 4.7 liter V8. Great motor. We, know they are. we did put a new battery in it. That's that. I love boring. That's boring. Boring is good in my business. Oh, and I locked the doors. Uh, I'm the worst ever at that. All right. So let's make one more spin around the truck because I can't unlock doors. Oh, I wish this was a white car because then I would definitely be driving this all summer. There's your passenger front window. Let's see. That up. There's your door locks. Power seat forward, back. See. Tilt forward, tilt back. It does have the side airbags. Just a tiny bit of wear. And that's some sort of thing that goes in the uh, in the uh, center console, probably. Trays, extra trays, whatever. All right. There's your passenger rear window. By the way, it's mid-May and it's 73 in Tucson and overcast. Unbelievable weather. So, this. This is how they fold forward, by the way. That seat will do the same thing. So like this. There you go. Let's see. Like, ah, you gotta have two hands. There you go. Like that. Pretty simple. The previous owner of this truck was very good to it. All right, that's your driver rear window. Make sure there's no surprises here. And there's not. We do have uh, controls back here for temperature. Toyota. There's your driver window. Typical Toyota. Everything works. Except the tire monitor light, which is typical on every damn make and model. So annoying. There's your door locks. Let's see. Driver's seat. Forward. Back. Up. Down. Rear seat cushion up and down. Seat back and forward. There's some, uh, there's your airbag deal on there. Let's see, we have uh, lumbar support. Let's see if we can. That's down and that is up. That's working. Make sure there's no surprises under the mat. The wheel that works fine. Let's see, rear glass. It's the rear glass up and down. That's down. That's up. 
Let's see what else we got going on here. All right, let's get in here. Mirrors. Let's see. We got mirrors right here. Out, in, up, down. Other side. Out, in, up, down. We got heated seats. What's that? This is a nice rig. Let's see. How do you work these guys? I'm so bad at these things. There you go. Boy, the motor's good, that too. Indication you didn't put that thing back very often because window motors like to wear out. Put a seatbelt on here. And go for a ride. All right. It does have cruise control. There's cruise on and off. There's the overdrive. See the overdrive thing? Off and on. I'm put it into neutral. I'm gonna put it into four, let's see, four low. There's that. Drive, there we go. And reverse. Boom. All right, then we're gonna to go to, let's see, four low. Now we're in four low. That's the, uh, when you put them into four low, the uh, slip control goes off. So if you take it out of four low, I'm gonna put it in reverse in four low. Four low works fine. Now I'm gonna put it in neutral. And I'm gonna go down here, I'm gonna take the four wheel drive off. There. There you go. Now it's gone. All right, let's go for a ride. This is a sweet car. If you come to Tucson to drive it home, you're gonna pay tax and dock fees. Dock fees are $250, taxes are Two percent city sales tax here in Tucson, plus whatever your state tax rate is. If your state tax rate, for example, if your state tax rate is three percent, you come here to drive it home, you're going to pay five percent tax. But your three plus R two is five percent, and uh, two hundred fifty dollars dock fee. If your tax rate is six percent, you're going to pay eight percent and a two hundred fifty dollars dock fee. If you pay by wire and ship, all you're going to pay is the agreed upon price, and that's it. Um, you deal with your tax man and your motor vehicle fees once it shows up at your front door in a shipping truck. Um, if you do uh, pay by wire and ship, we will fill in the information you provide us, uh, your name and address, notarize the title, uh, scan it into your online file, so you'll be able to see it before the title even mails out. We even scan in the, uh, the, the uh, envelope we mail it in. Um, let's see, deposits, deposits $500. Once we receive a deposit, we'll put your name in a banner over the truck at wheelkinetics.com and you'll know it's yours. Until then, it is for sale. Last thing I'm gonna say, it's kind of obvious, this thing's way out of warranty by miles and years. I say this uh, at the end of every uh, video I do. Boy, it's a nice car, really nice car. Jesus. This is the 35 zone and it's only a matter of time before I get a ticket, so. Anyway, this thing, I would drive it to Maine right now. I'd get on I-10 and go east. That's what I would do in this truck. It's a, this is a nice rig. This is one of the nicer cars we have. And uh, you would swear it has 40,000 miles, not 160. Um, it looks like it and it runs like it. Uh, anyway, uh, back to the warranty speech. I say this about every vehicle in our inventory. I don't, I'm not singling this one out. Um, please feel free to go to the very end of every video and you'll hear me say the same thing. The people at Toyota who built this, uh, they know it better than we do because they built it. They engineer it. They built it. They know it. Um, if they couldn't figure out, if they couldn't give it a uh, you know 20 year, 300,000 mile warranty, which they would love to have done, um, they know that they don't know what's going to happen to it after a certain number of miles or years. Well, we don't know more than they know. Uh, basically, what I'm saying is there's risk involved in buying used cars. If you don't like risk, you got to go buy a new one. And a new one of these bad boys is going to be way into the 50s and or maybe even 60. Okay, but then you'll get three years and 36,000 miles a piece. And when you're done with that, you're going to owe 40 or 50,000 dollars still, and you'll be out of warranty. So you're saving a pound of money. This is a hell of a car. Um, but you got to realize that some of the money you're saving is going to have to go to a, into a repair sooner or later. It could be next week or it could be five years from now. All right, that's my speech. Hell of a car.